Welcome back, everybody. Here it is time to get underway for game number two of Nip up against Bears. While Bears have the one game advantage, Nip have a chance to try and tie up the series and keep the hopes alive here in the lower bracket. First round. And potentially go up against the Lions. I'm Toby One. I'm joined here by Andy Draskel Styles. That sounds that sounds really odd introducing you like that. I don't know about that. We're not gonna do that again. Uh, that's alright. I mean, most people I know actually just call me Andy anyway. Uh, like nobody, nobody I know in person actually calls me Draskel. That seems weird. Weird, because normally I only call you Draskel. <laughs> that must be very odd for you. Uh, right. I mean, it's it's fine. Everyone has their own like uh, their own thing. You know, some people feel more comfortable calling me Andy. Some people call me Draskel. Some people call me Dad. So yeah. Yeah. You well. just you're not gonna make me awkward. Is basically what I'm saying. <laughs> Unshakable. Yeah, don't yep. give don't give people that challenge. They would be very willing to accept that challenge to make you shakeable. Dude, I lived in a house with James for the last five years. Okay, good point. Yeah, yeah, you're done. You're good. No, nothing can shake you. <laughs> there is no greater test a man can put himself through. Apart from maybe the second game of Dota. A segue, so smooth. Um, in we oh go. <laughs> Centaur, Druid, Alchemist. ES has made it into the early ban phase, but the Keeper of the Light is back again. And Ninjas in Pajamas have gone for their staple Ogre Magi instead of running this roaming Earthshaker. We'll have the Ogre I'm back. a much bigger fan of the, the Ogre opening than the Night Stalker. Like, the Night Stalker was an idea, but then they threw in the, the Earthshaker with it, and then it's just, oh god, it's so hard, actually, to run those two heroes together. Plus, the Safe Lane Slark, when they protected their Lifestealer pick so well, they pretty much left Nip. I mean, uh, they had a couple of options, I guess. They could have went for, like, a, a TB or something, I guess. That wasn't banned. But they went for the more, I guess, era-centric hero, which I'm not sure how much he's played TB in the past. But yeah, I think the draft in the last game, Ferris, is just way better. Okay. So this time around, they're going to go with something a little bit more stable, open up with the, the Ogre Magoo, Reserve see what they want to get uh, for the second pick. Yeah. Now, they usually pick Quake this hero in the first two, right? Like, almost exclusively. I don't know if you really want to do that in this Need game. Oh, they're not going and to. They're not okay. going to in this game either. They picked the Nick. They needed the counter to the Invoker and the Coddle. Like that was that was yeah. the bigger thing they needed because I'm just wondering how they repel this kind of damage if you do end up having like the Beastmaster call they ran before. What happens if Bears picks up the Rubik or Slaughter still available Ten in the pool? Remaining. That's another crush. That's amplification. That's a lot of burst damage into a target where Five you can even have Invoker oh. throwing that damage from the mid. It's so back. two insanely tanky heroes for Ninjas in Pajamas to start with. Yeah, I, I like the Nyx. Um Again, it's it's kind of the same thing as a Night Stalker, except in this game it actually does a good against both heroes. Like Invoker, Ten Mana Burn is really annoying. Like you can very easily get Carapace done during fights because pretty much Five all the time Invokers three. are going Xard and dropping Meteors and whatnot. So it's it's very e easy to utilize your Radiant your chain three. disables. Um, it seems to be that these types of heroes like Nyx have just fallen off a bit because there's so much five man Dota that. Like, scouting for information, which is what Nyx used to be great at once you hit six, even if you can't actually get a kill, you would at least be, you know, telling your team Ten the movements seconds. of the enemy and whatnot. It's just that it's so often that their heroes are always together Five that you kind of just remaining. get in these situations where you're like, well, I'm just going to buy Midas because yep. I'm not doing anything anyway, right? That's, that's what we saw the Nyx from Secret do. Uh, yep. Guess what Puppy ended up transitioning into as well. <laughs> he, it's the Spike Carapace that's doing more of the work. The Spike Carapace and Impale is now set up by Spike Carapace. Yeah, that's how it works, man. A little bit disgusting. There's the Beastmaster ban I was looking for from Koifa. He's he's not wanting to deal with that on the safe lane. Air already got shut down pretty heavily on the safe lane. I'm not going to go through Yeah, that I think again. that he's just asking his team, he's like, just give me like clinks or something that just lanes so I don't have to worry about having like two supports yeah. babysit me 24 7. Interesting that Bears actually take Radiant out Naga. They, they must be just worried about like, anything NIP can do to stall up the game. Well, Koifa plays it, right? But Era doesn't. Uh, I don't think it'll be much of an issue for Era to do it. I don't know, though. It's one of those heroes where I feel like if you don't play it, oh, here we it go can again. be like a, a pretty big difference. Yeah, that's the same support. Duo. I mean, it worked so well last yeah. game. Yeah. The rotations from Yapsor were on point. You know, Adam pretty much got to his Aghanims in a timely fashion. He was able to pretty much do whatever. Um, yeah, it's, if, it, if it works, don't fix it, right? Mm -hmm. Ten seconds remaining. 
I, I, I got distracted by something over Five on the side. I remaining. don't know why I just read that. Um, I'm looking at Twitch chat. It's the worst thing in the world to do. Uh, love you guys. Nope. <laughs> Where's Where do we go from here? So you're up against the Rupik and Coddle. You know you've got a lot of push power and, and counter push power from Bez. Do you try and force it as a full five-man group up from NIP? Or do you give Hero his classic, like, like Luna? It was banned in the last game. Do you try and grab something like this and just have a better five-man ball that Bears can't deal with? I'm actually wondering if they're going to be looking to give Arrow something like the Life Stealer themselves this game. I mean, I, I don't know if they'll pick it now because they, they kind of have to get rid of the, like, the Ursa pick or whatever or the Weaver. That's kind of how it set up Bears so well in the first game because Nip banned Weaver as their last ban and then Bears banned Ursa and then took Lifestealer. That's like the perfect situation for a Lifestealer to, to thrive. But this time around, I don't know if, if Nip are really like the super... Okay, they are going to yeah, take it. You got the, it. The super really five-man oriented team. team. But um, I wouldn't be surprised to see Bears just go Weaver Ursa like straight up because one of them is going to get banned almost assuredly. Uh, and they don't have... No, Nyx is Trixie's hero. Never mind. So they do have that. So they like Nip can't run... Weaver and Lifestealer, I don't believe. But, uh, yeah, it's it's going to be interesting. I like the Lifestealer pick a lot more, though, because, Five again, it's just the safety. Remaining. Like, giving Aerith something a little bit more stable that he'll be able to walk to lane with and not just get crushed, right? Yeah. And there's no Centaur this time, either. Time. Yeah, he, he can rage when he sees the Illuminate coming. Like, he can dodge some parts of the damage or just have Feast give him the life back again. But then you wonder, like, okay, so how does Bears deal with it? Like, you mentioned the Ursa. Again, the Troll Warlord, I'm just going to fly quickly. As another I like Weaver a bit more. You like Weaver? I like, yeah, because a high ground potential is a lot better. I mean, sure, you can abuse Roshan with Ursa, but I think that Weaver is just more flexible. You know, he doesn't have to worry about getting like a lane counter or anything like that. They're gonna, they're gonna go for that mag. <laughs> he has been the hero of heroes of late. Uh, makes it almost impossible, right, for Nip to push high ground. It's triple melee, right? Like, triple melee heroes on Nip. And you can just blast pick something that benefits from Empower, pretty much whatever you want. Uh, other way around, man. Five seconds remaining. Oh, okay. See, oh, oh you, you, mean, you mean triple melee heroes because Magnus can grab them, but yeah. The buffs, yeah, the buffs yeah, are triple going. melee because it's it's hard for those heroes to not group up. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. yeah. And, and then you're going to push high ground with those three heroes. And then you're up against Fate Bolt, Illuminate, Meteorite, Deafening Blast, Shockwave. Like, you're never going to have a creep wave sustained long enough in order to do the push. Yeah, bears really do like their wave. Venom and I mean, a lot of that also, oh, I think, has to do with again. the fact team the Venomancer. Okay, have you seen this? Is it a Trixie Venom or is it it's, an Aero Venom? It's a Trixie Venom. So what he does, and okay. they only do this on Dyer's side. Uh, sorry, not, not Trixie. It's a, it's a Harney Venom. Um, uh, so we oh, the jungle Venno. Okay. It's, it's, yeah, the, it's yeah, the jungle yeah. Venno on the uh, on the ancient slash two camp spot, uh, just northwest of the secret shop of the dire side. Uh, yeah, I have seen this actually. Yeah, and, and he he'll farm up about four or five levels in just about four minutes time. by doing this. And there's no way bears like bears don't have a lineup that can contest this. So he's going to get a lot of free, a lot of free money and experience. Nothing's going to stop that. Yeah, I, I like the Venno here quite a bit. It's also one of those things where, you know, one of the best things to deal with a tremendous amount of wave clear is either get your own wave clear, get pick potential, and just kill the heroes, or just have, like, this static defense. And that's kind of what Venomancer offers you. So, you know, Coddle's pushing out the waves, Magnus is pushing out the waves, and you just have this Plague Ward army sitting in front of a tower, and it makes it really difficult for bears to just walk up and claim it. Whereas last game, they had almost no wave clear at all. And they were just getting shoved Ten in seconds. every single lane all the time. And it was becoming increasingly difficult for, like, the Night Stalker and the Earthshaker who want to kind of roam around and find these picks to do it. Because the lane equilibrium was just never favoring them. So they're always running around trying to de-push lanes and uh, make things happen that way. But here we go with a quick for Storm, the dream. Uh, we'll see if it's a dream. <laughs> it's a this is a hard Storm game, to be honest. I like There's a lot of cats. I, I, I play Storm periodically. I don't like playing against Coddle. I don't want to play against Rubik, uh, and instant disables in general Seconds with RP and stuff like that, just not the most enjoyable anti experience. And the instant anti-mage. All right. Well, there's an, an Ooh, even, this is going to be a hard game. An even bigger buff up coming in from uh, from the Magnus on top of the anti-mage. Invocal at the time of his life. Nip will still get a lot of experience out of this, however. Like, yeah, they're running a double melee uh, safe lane with the Lifestealer and the Ogre, 
the next assassin's going to have a hard time on the offlane because then y you can move the coddle straight into like mana leak first, right? Just push the next off the lane that way. That was, it, it was uh, I think it was coddle as well as dazzle, who were two of the heroes that were doing that very proficiently throughout the European qualifiers. Yeah. This is going to be tricky though for for Nip because. Like, Lifestealer and Storm only really deal with Anti-Mage when you're playing from ahead. And, and like you're saying, you got this jungle Venno, you're going to you're gonna have really good lanes in comparison to what you had in game one. No question. I don't think they're going to get a triple lane loss like they did before. That's actually pretty hard to do, to pick to lose all three of your lanes. Not easy. But this time around, I think it's going to be a lot more stable for them. You know, Quakefa, maybe he gets to a timely Bloodstone. They make a couple of Infest ganks happen. Um, they, there's actually really two good targets for him. He's got Koikfa and he's got the, the Trixie Nyx as well. So there's going to be a lot of threat for these like squishy Rubik's and uh, Invoker even and, and the Coddle <laughs> on top of that. I was wondering like what they would do to try and stop this. Uh, Yapsaw smoked up and TP'd out. He's blocked the camp, which actually isn't required to do what uh, to do what Trixie does, uh, do, do what Honey does. Well, the Ancients are the most EXP by far. Yeah, so. yeah. Or no, he, wait, that's he, not... He puts the, the ward block about here and then farms this camp and this camp. And he'll... Yeah, I keep he'll forgetting stack, that's not he'll the... he'll stack the Ancients. I always forget they switch those camps again, so the Ancients are actually on the yeah. low ground. Keep yeah. forgetting about that. It's, it's really crap to do that on Radiant side, because you look at the Radiant side camps, and all you can do is put the wards on the Bounty Rune, seconds. and then okay. farm that camp and that camp. You can't, you can't reach the Ancients from there because of the wall. No, you just cut the tree. You can definitely reach the ancients. And still farm it? Like Yeah, you can farm all three. You actually want to farm all three. The reason he didn't block the ancients is because the ancients are a lot harder. And with level one plague wards, you're not really gonna be able to kill the ancients. You kinda want like level three or two or whatever. It uh, takes way too long. Yeah, so if Trixie, he's not gonna level stun. The battle begins. Was looking towards it, but Honey got revealed for a second. And they know what he's doing. Like he's got the iron talent, so at least they can keep tabs on him. Yeah, I mean, it's they saw it and they immediately placed a ward there, so they clearly have an idea of what's happening. Mm. Just wondered, like, is this really worth the vision? Like, Harney's left one of his own defensive observer wards down. So you block up the camp, sure. But now you lose vision for Firo. Like, the other observer wards watching the top bounty rune, where it's a live sealer going one on two because the Keeper of the Light is up here. For now. Well, uh, you say that Firo loses vision, but realistically, you know, what is going to come his way that he's not going to expect? Like, Cinderin's going to sit here and throw Ignites at him, even if he had a ward. Like, that ward actually does nothing for him. Whereas the defensive ward towards the bottom rune not only scouts the rune, but it makes sure that Hani's going to see any rotation from Yapsor that comes over here to try to soak EXP. So he'll actually know, you know, where the support is all the time, the support that can actually get a kill as well. Because Firo's probably not going to get any help from a coddle, and even if, you know, Adam did rotate towards mid, what's he going to do? throws out a random mana leak and then walks away. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I think it is actually pretty much the best ward placement that they can have. Um, but yeah, Yapsor, you can see him. He's, he's there now. He's just trying to be annoying. Yeah, but he can't go up. Like, now that, uh, like, Hani's got level 2, yeah, the Plague Walls, he might be able to farm them, but the Poison Sting is going to keep him away, too. And Hani's just enjoying the farm. It's not going to be quite as fast, but it'll still be all right. Yeah. And Nero's having a safe time up on top. I know this is one of the heroes which we saw like like Ramses would always play and would always come out on top of his lane just because of the innate like nature of the hero that you can find the farm. And then in middle lane, you got 11-4 Koit for up against a 4-0 Invoker. Well, he's, he was playing against a dual lane for the first two waves. Yeah. But it's, it's the start that Koit was really looking for. Is this hero South Burn? It was, uh, yeah, it was Fear. Thought I was Koifa for a moment with the rotation from Cinderin. They have enough damage. Nice. First blood goes the way of NIP. Yep, so was trying to create space. Ends up feeding. Yeah, it's really hard for Rubik to function against these heroes. Like, high base armor on the Storm, high base armor on the Ogre. Heroes are actually both very durable, whereas both the Invoker and the Rubik are pretty frail. Like, one armor and two armor, respectively. So, you can't really trade that effectively. And trading with an Ogre in the first place doesn't really matter who you are. It's probably not going to favor you. And that's why I was mentioning, like, you know, Nip need to be playing from ahead with these heroes, especially against an anti-mage. You need to make sure that you're not becoming a liability to your team, being like this huge mana void target on the storm, or, you know, Life Stealer not just having a lockdown to be able to kill the hero. And this might turn into one of those games where there's going to be a lot of split pushing, because there's actually, like, two or three heroes on the side of bears that can do it. Whereas, you know, Nip, they got, like, the Nyx to scout out and uh, the storm to get picks and... 
the life stealer, I suppose, to infest inside. But the Veno and the Ogre are pretty immobile by nature. That's why you just move earlier. Hani's already up inside of his own jungle, and the haste rune that was uh, grabbed by Rubik, he used to try and scout out where where Hani is. But Hani's just enjoying the jungle for the moment. He'll be able to do something about this bottom lane. There's uh, no mana on the Nyx Assassin. Obviously, he's up against an anti mate, so you wouldn't expect mu that much. Yeah, it's, it's hard to kill him. Once he's out of mana, he actually takes a lot less damage. So it's it's kind of weird that dynamic with some heroes. You know, Timber Saw is the same way. Sometimes people would pick anti mage to just hit him a lot, so he doesn't have mana to use spells. But then he just has so much armor and regen that you can't really kill him. Same thing here. Rubik support is not gonna kill with an anti mage on the offlane. So Trixie will end up getting a lot because of this. And I'm I'm still just watching this Venom as to get free farm. And when Hani does this, he waits till he gets arcane boots and then moves to bottom lane. And they just push the bottom tower. And up against an anti mage, I'm wondering if there is a response beyond the Keeper of the Light rotating down there that's able to stop that push. Mm -hmm. I mean, I don't actually know how much emphasis Nip are going to put on killing that safe lane tower. Like, their heroes aren't really that great for Siege. They kind of need to wait for Hani, right? Like, yeah. Hani's the one, get level 7. That's why, that's why he just gets, there. He gets the arcane boots, yeah. Arcane boots, maybe level 7. Yeah, if, if they go down there and start getting a Plague Ward army down, I don't think that bears are going to be able to do much to stop it. I think they will probably just rotate out the AM and maybe, like you said, sit the Kala down there and just have Fata go farm like top or mid or whatever. But then you're going to rotate to what? So if, if the Kala goes down there, maybe a little bit concerned more about the Magnus. I mean, they, they're not going to stop for it from getting farmed, but at the same time, he's not really hindering Era that much. This uh, is even Storm technically... Spirit. Trouble for Koi, but with that Sunstrike, a lot of burn damage. He needs more life to survive and just oh. doesn't have it. So close, actually. Who would have thought the 2x or meatball gets a kill? With level 2 fate ball behind it? I mean, it doesn't seem like the scariest combination, right? But ends up working out. And bringing down Koi, but that's going to be a nice little addition. But at the same time, I'm still looking at the highest net worth or over on into the pajamas, and it's uh, it's the Venomancer. Uh, yep. he, he's actually almost number one on the on the map, and only uh, topped by the anti mage. Well, I mean, he got the ancient stack as well, and you can see yeah. like they easily reach all three camps. He is not even cutting the tree, it doesn't even matter. So this is this is a strength of it, like getting all three in the same spot. Because you kind of want the wards up all the time. You don't want to have to move from place to place because it really slows you down. Yep. And the, the ward did a little bit of work, but at the end of the day, Hani's still going get to uh, get his levels. Yep. So what's he buy? So Magic Wand, he's buying up the raindrops. This is almost exactly the same as he did before. So this is just him looking to enter combat. But I wonder yep. the lane he goes into. Like, if they try and shut down the Invoker, if they force the mid lane storm spirit is approaching level six but he's not there just yet i think killing the safe lane tower is the best or mid i mean mid's gonna be harder to do though i think it's easier to take the am safe lane tower than it is to go mid yeah he's he's headed down there he's waiting for a moment maybe they're looking to trigger off the shrine with trixie uh or maybe not trixie's inside a vendetta so they could trigger it give him his mana and his life up and then move over to do something about father this is still a pretty hard kill maybe actually with Oh, he doesn't have Gale. Never mind. I was going to say, if, they, if he has Gale, maybe they can do it, but... Honey, honey doesn't level up when he does this build. From here on yeah, out, no, he'll I... only go Poison Sting. He doesn't get the Gale till later. Yeah, it makes sense. I, I just mean, like, in the sense that if you wanted kill potential, you would need Gale. I think Yapsaw's for a... Okay, yeah. Trixie's going inside, trying to body block up Yapsaw, throwing him around. The Spy Carapace has worn off, and now Trixie has no protection. He's visible. He's got six six charges, but with the Shockwave connecting... It won't be enough. That was a very unfortunate first vendetta gank. He was he was the meatball tracking actually Absol. didn't. He was tracking the him meatball hit him for like way. what like one second, and then it just didn't do any more damage, and they still got the kill. It was a nice rotation coming in there from Forev. Would not have killed him without the shockwave. If I if correct me if I'm wrong, but I think Father is actually using his dominant to creep to try and clean up the plague wards. Well, he's doing that, and he's eating the uh, infused raindrop charges as well. He threw like three shockwaves already at Honey. Uh, it's an efficiency thing. Trixie's on bottom lane now. Fata's still got his blink available, but the Sun's able to connect him with the poison Nova. They still need the poison sting on him for him to go critical. Fata, the TP out, they see him, but the damage, it won't be enough. Fata, a straight TP home will survive. He'll lose his Sata. 
And that's probably all the effect Nip were looking for. That's money in the bank. I mean, the, the bigger thing here is that it puts him in a position to actually oh, pressure the tower. Yapsor gets the cliff. Get cliff, Sorry, bro. Trix is in the He's neighborhood, right. and uh, yep. Sindarin's already TPing down. At the same time, Keeper of the Light's gonna go down. Looks like a solo kill in favor of Era. And Storm Spirit's on the long jump too. Koifa burning a fair chunk of mana for that one, but remember he still got the arcane rune, so he'll jump up, avoid the skewer of Perez. And Trixie, now he's in trouble as well. Can't get his impale off, will be mana voided down. But it's Fira who gets the last hit as the invoker. But that's four heroes, the four remaining alive heroes that rotate mid to kill off the Nyx Assassin. That was such a greedy mana void. Fata mana voided Trixie when he was missing like 150 mana to try to get the last hit. That is a true AM player at heart. Only use your mana void to get a last day. Didn't even get it. I think, uh, yeah, Fear ends up getting it. But uh, still a lot more solid of an early game here from Nip, and it's reflected in the CS that they're actually getting during a laning phase. Like, the Lay Stealer's only a tiny bit behind the AM, and Era also, I would say, had a, a much harder laning phase than what Fata did. And I think he's also going to be contributing to the fights a lot sooner. He's just going for the straight up armlet. He's got that storm uh, ready to go with the ball lightning or the next assassin, you know, depending on whichever one he wants to invest into. But the thing that's, I guess, a bit alarming for Nip is the fact that Thorev is going to have a blink at like 11 minutes. And that's pretty terrifying, especially once he starts getting in power. He can follow the AM around. Oh, stun's going to miss. Yeah, Yapsol's jumping in, looking for that telekinesis follow up stun. Uh, yeah, so it's fine. He leaves a remnant of his own behind now. Stolen that. Rubik remnants, by the way, way cooler than actual storm remnants. I want him to drop one now so I can see it. They do like the same poses as the normal storm remnants, but they just look like Rubik, so it's like ten times better. Top tower is under attack. Uh, Trixie's gonna find Farda farming up for the moment. A lot more support rotating down. This time, Cinderin's coming along with him. And then she starts buffing up Honey. I suppose when you got four points up in the Poison Sting, you're going to force down this lane as hard as you can. Uh, they're TPing in. So, say hello to Yapsaw. He, uh, he'll come down to the bottom lane with Illuminate and Fade Bolt, plus Remnant. This was the issue we were flagging during the drafting phase. How is Nip meant to keep a wave alive in order to bring down a, a, a tower or any kind of objective? They rely heavily on the pick. I mean, they've drafted around that, right? You don't take Nyx and Storm with a Lifestealer to not get pick off kills. Like, if they get one hero down, like, even if it's Yapsor or if it's, you know, Adam, I guess would probably be the best. But you kill either of them and then you put the Plague Wards down, that tower is just gonna die. Unless they fully commit to defending it. And I don't think they would have before, you know, Forab has his blank. But we mentioned that he's very, very close to it now. Uh, on this wave, he would actually have it, but it looks like he's just gonna sacrifice himself and, and give it to Fata instead. More fun for the Anti-Mage. How do you actually want to build the Anti-Mage as well? Like, it's obviously you still got to go Battle Fury, right? Even though you have the Dominator? Yeah, you s it depends. I mean, I've seen, it, I've seen it both ways. Some people go to Manta before the Battle Fury and then go back for the Battle Fury after the fact. Some people forego the Battle Fury completely and just go Manta straight Abyssal. Here I think... Go. Adam's dead. Oh, Goodbye, God. 343. There's a jump back out. Trixie, they don't even need the sun. They use the open wounds. But they get that pick off, they remove one of the, the hindrances that's been stopping their push on bottom lane. But look at Hani, look at his item. So I, I, I hate to take away from the life, so I want to come, uh, uh, not, not from life stealer, uh, from the anti mage. But he's already got mech on Hani at 11 minutes. Yeah, dude, jungle venom. This, this is no joke. He farms incredibly fast. It's almost comparable to like Enigma farm. And that's insane. Sandra is in trouble. Multi stuns, cold snap. And just burn town. There's another TP on the way. The bottom T1 town's already taken is, is Hani. He'll TP into the mid. A lot of rotations coming up as well from Trixie as well as Era. They're gonna hold this tower and just push them back. Fada. Open wounds up. He's actually standing his ground. He's With got that ogre ice on him, man. Oh for him. Cancel. Yeah, he pulled out of that RP. I think it's because he didn't actually turn when he RP'd. So like if he hit the RP and he was turned the proper direction, you could have just immediately skewered. But I think he got scared that he wasn't going to have the time to get behind the life stealer to skewer him back if he didn't do the proper turn RP. Okay, so now we see how bears deal with the D push that is ninjas in pajamas. I suppose that's one way to do it. Spike carapace damage the keeper of the light down until he's dead. I mean, it's got Tranquils, so it yeah. doesn't really matter. Just needs to give the opportunity for the Storm to jump. 
But Koifer still needs more mana before he's capable of doing that. Even if he does get insanely lucky like he is picking up Arcane after Arcane Rune. Yeah, but bears can't really, like, fight into this. It's really annoying for 4F2 because the more Plague Wards that are down... Like, if, if Hani is actually sitting in the lane and dropping Plague Wards, I see almost no way where 4F is going to be able to get a good RP. Because you're either going to get hit by a random Plague Ward or you're going to get slowed after you go in and Gale or whatever. And it's, it's going to be really difficult for you to get out alive. And they just don't want to commit to that. They go to bottom lane instead. Quick jump away. For Rev has to actually charge himself with the skewer fall because he, he misblinked. Got himself caught in the tree line. And Trixie may use this to his advantage. He knows Forev doesn't have his escape. Needs to attack. The sun's there with a pop out. RP is available and Forev will commit it. Trixie kept this distance. And now what's actually stolen is the impale stolen by Yapsaw Era. We'll get hit by this. And in comes Firo. Life Sealer needs a way out but has no rage. Had the armor off as well. Forev will escape on about 30 HP. Man, that's super unfortunate. They would have got the mag if uh, Trixie had mana burn, but he's... I don't, like, I don't know the standard Nyx build anymore from a perspective of, you know, pro play, but I think that most of the time when you're playing against supports like Rubik and Coddle, you would just go 4-1-1. But I can see, like, the second point in the carapace because it pretty much doubles the effective stun of the abilities, so not necessarily the wrong choice, but just an unfortunate one because he couldn't actually get the kill. I think Yabzor actually messed himself up there in the mid lane. He did a telekinesis and uh, tried to pull him back and then threw the impel and stunned him halfway through the telekinesis. He never hit the mark. So his stun strike yeah, also never connected. The cast point. It gets you sometimes. You think, oh, it's going to take X amount of time for my stun to hit, but then you realize that you're Rubik and you have no cast animation, so it just instantly goes out and you're like, whoops, did it too fast. It actually happens a lot more than you would think. Ira and Hani are teaming up to try and take out the top tower. Forever Gam is on the hunt, but he doesn't have RP available. And Hani is already TPing himself into the mid lane. As much defense as they, as they can muster. Don't let him go. Blink skewers, Tindran. Puts himself almost out of space, but dodges the hook. But the tower is still down. Looks like Fato's going to go for the, the super greed here. He is going to go just the Battle Fury, straight after the, the Helm of the Dominator. I guess it's more of a... Um, it's a choice that you can make. It's like, if I want to fight, I'll buy the Manta because I know I have the Empower. But if I'm just going to buy a Battle Fury and have Empower, I'll just be like six slotted in 30 minutes. Like that, maybe maybe 35. But, you know, you get the idea. You just farm like a beast. Mm -hmm. It's smoke gank time. Or it's smoke push time, however you want to look at this. They leave an Observer Ward up, which is able to watch the rotation coming in from the Radiant Jungle. And then Koifer just has a little bit of pressure. You'll have Hani behind him. Remember, this is a push with a mech. I'm also looking at Hani's stash, and he is now 200 gold away from having a veil for this Venomancer. That tick is going to start to hurt if you can also, like, get an Aghanim Scepter at some point. Mana will oh, become I mean, his sure biggest problem. Nah, TPM. That's scattered out. Storm Spirit did put a Redmond down, but Yamsaw picks him up. Some strike. Koifer! He doesn't get out in time, or will he? He's so low. Koifer can't ball lightning away. They've lost the Storm Spirit. Cinder and starts up his TP. Mana Void will cancel that one if Vada actually had the mana for it. He didn't. They still get the extra one. Trixie on the back lines. Forever was able to isolate him. But RP is being committed. Yeah, that's a, a really bad turn of events for Nip. They just got the Bloodstone on Koikfa, and he just dies straight up. Like, I've actually seen that happen so many times as Qualifier. Bloodstone gets Storm, or sorry, Storm, Storm gets Bloodstone, instantly dies. And then I'm just like, all right, well, that's four charges down. They're going to go for the, the smoke up, though. Killing yeah, Fata, though, is so hard. Th they know. Koikfa smoked out of vision of the smoke, uh, out of vision of the Observer Ward. Uh, but uh, Life Sealer jumped into him in Vision of the Observer Ward. You're still going to find a target as Keeper of the Light who warded up. Cinderin's got a Sentry Ward available so they can maybe not realize that he did that. Oh, no, no, no. The ping is, the ping is coming. It's like there is an Observer Ward here. But they're not sticking around. Yeah, they really want to be able to take out the AM, but with the Ice Armor creep, like that thing is so OP. Look at him, no fear. Just standing there. Tang on the creep wave. Okay, That's three heroes might be enough. If they can get the stun. They actually need like every bit of damage though. There needs to be like a vendetta hit and a follow-up stun. Perfect like chain stun into a kill. That's like the only way. Top lane's being forced. 
Hani's going for a wraparound, but there's no one that can TP in here. Even Forever's blinked out. The Gale will connect Forever. Gonna go invis with a Shadow Amulet. Cinderin's here, but there is no Sentry Ward. So Forever is just ticking. It's, it's Nova, it's Poison Sting, and they yeah. infest damage to ensure a quick and efficient kill and a full Echo Saber for the Life Stealer. Yeah, they're getting the, the proper farm on all their cores. The consistent issue, though, is going to be, you know, Firo on his Invoker and then the AM as well. We haven't really talked much about Invoker because, as most AM games, whenever there is an AM, you talk a lot about him because it's, you know, if he has a good game, they can win. But yeah, Firo's just been kind of quietly doing his thing and he's sitting pretty high up on the net. He's actually the highest over the AM, actually. This is an AM who has been receiving some empowers and just now finished a Battle Fury, so. buff up AM, so yet you'll see the Invoker probably slip behind him. Oh, I would imagine so. Wow. Now that he has Battle Fury. And does that put NIP on a clock? Uh, you got a it, lot. It you got a lot does. of farm on three of their guys. The Nyx Assassin has now turned into a four roll. Uh, and he's just gonna go for Blink Dagger on this guy. But like, how does NIP actually end this game? That's that's kind of like my question mark now. Because you've still got great, you guys still got great D push, and Fire's going to get really good farm. The pick off's fantastic for them, and now you've got Trixie walking under a Sentry Ward. He, he's yeah. out of range of the Observer for a moment. Right, well, that's why I was mentioning, moment. you know, early on, you want to be ahead uh, with Nipstrap. You never want to be playing like this reactionary game against an AM and a, a split pushing Invoker 24/7. Like that's not the game you want to play. I mean, Trixie, even at this point, is 20 minutes in. He's, he's kind of struggling, to be honest, because the, the one downside of having that, that Venno sitting in the jungle is that you have nowhere to actually hit your own jungle creeps if you can't farm. So now Trixie is, like, really far behind on his Blink Dagger, and he's, like, he's the one who has to make the plays, and he doesn't have the item to make the plays, and that just puts more pressure on Koikfa, which, you know, the more pressure you're putting on the players, the more likely they are to, to make a mistake. But they are grouping up here in mass, bottom lane. Four has got the Shadow Blade here. Yeah, Absol's got a fresh Blink Dagger. And this is something which hasn't been revealed to NIP, so the pressure on Koifa is so high. Forever is right on top of them. They don't know. They don't have vision. The double RP will be there. Forever's got Cure pulling him back. The stun, the burn. They just pop like a top. Koifa under the tower. He'll get illuminated down. You're able to get a little bit back with the Invoker falling, but Ira's on the run, and Hani has to do work. The Nova combining up with the Veil. They know the tick is too much. Forever will TP back to base. Fighter as well as limping away. Forever is still ticking. He's gonna survive. He went out of 19, 17. The poison stinks still on him. Oh. He dies! The tick is too much. That's not even an Aghanim Scepter. That's just the Veil, Nova, and level 4 Gale. He even bought raindrops to try to mitigate the damage from the Gale tick. That was actually next level. And he still died. Nip, not, uh, not done. They're coming back in again. Yeah, I'm still throwing down the Sentry Ward. Trixie. He keeps doing this where he triggers Spike Carapace really early. Just just running through an open field triggers Spike Carapace. Maybe a little bit of nerves. Who knows? But yeah, I mean, I, at this point, Nip have to continually do this, right? They apply pressure, they know RP's down. The mag's not even alive, so that also helps. It's just really annoying because if the, the coddle is up, it makes the push in of itself very difficult. The only thing that can safely hit the tower is like the Life Stealer with Rage or some Venno Wards. Storm is not really great siege. Ogre and Nyx are in the same boat. We're gonna find the... Uh, right, gonna keep her the light. Uh, with the Gale, Adam will tick. There's, there's nothing that keeps him alive here. Illumin's trying to help out, okay. but for Red's called out of position. He had no RP, that's 45 seconds without a Magnus or a Keeper of the Light. And if NIP feel pressured enough, they may try and do some chip damage up. Or they could just rotate mid and bring down that tier 1 town finally. Yeah, that tier 1 needs to die. I mean, the tier 1 is really important for being able to secure Roche, even with the even with shrines. You just don't want to be able to get hit from multiple angles, right? So maybe they're just going to go straight for it? Yeah, looks good. They can't be. really kill it that fast, though. They need Desso on the Life Stealer. Does he have it? He does. Okay. And Era just gets a kill on the bottom lane. Yapsor. Looks like it was another Vendetta gank. Yeah, it looks to be. My eyes were over towards the mid because I'm, I'm trying to watch Fada's movement. He's jumping around, he's creep skipping out. It's being a real pain in the butt to ninjas in pajamas, but Nip were looking at both Roshan and the T1 tower. And the fact the T1 tower wasn't taken, it's kind of fired a couple of warning bells for bears, hence the Sunstrike into the pit to scout out NIP's movement. But Keeper of the Light's coming up from the side. 
His Ghost Bomb's coming off cooldown too, so if he wants to just drag in the AM, he can do it. But that Sentry Ward Plague Ward battle is doing his thing, so there's no real easy vision, except for the fact the Sentry Ward went down. And there goes the Aegis Immortal. Magnus under that Sentry! It was deep warding the Observer Ward, but he may not have realized exactly where it was. So threw his own life away. Fartus pressure on top will force NIP to return. And this is going to be like the story of the game now. It's going to be Fata split pushing lanes, being a nuisance, because right now Nip have the teamfight advantage and having the Aegis on Quakefa. That's probably one of the, the biggest chances they've been given this whole game. Like, four have just died, what, two or three times in a row? Uh-huh. And, like, without getting a good RP, like, look at how freaking deep Quakefa is right now. He really wants to jump because he knows, like, if I get these picks, we get two towers. Yapsaw's yeah, so close, but it's the Invoker. So there's your jump forward. Yapsaw yeah, will create a little bit of space for the pick up, but Era raged up. Nothing was going to stop him from beating into the Invoker. And another hero with no buyback, but he denies it. The Forest Spirit's there. So they don't get everything they're hoping for, but Trixie, a wrap around the back. The Sentry Wards see too much. And Nip understands that. Won't stop them from doing their push for Rev. Gets rid of the Observer Ward, flags their positioning because he did get rid of this, however. But the smoke wasn't going to last much longer. Sorry, his invis from Shadowblade wasn't going to last much longer. I mean, the Invoker kill with a 10 second BKB is huge. Um, not being able to get the tower, though. They're going to find Fata. He's got Manta. Have they got enough control? He might actually be in trouble. Might he can throw down more Blade Wars. He doesn't have a TP. With no TP? He's yeah, dead. Yeah, he's, he's dead. Yeah, he's definitely dead. He tried to mana void Koi for the last moment. He mantas like super early there. I thought he was gonna like blink away and wait for the storm to like ball after him, because that's that's how you bait the fight, right? You make the storm use all his mana by blinking away, and then you just mana void him when he's standing next to the Veno and hope that you can at least pop the Aegis before you go down. Because if your TP's down, you can't. I, I I don't think you manta before blink if you if you're gonna get galed. That's just like, I mean, obviously you can't break it, but it's the only chance I think you have of getting a counter kill. Trixie now worked out. Uh, he should have known that anyway, because they put an observe ward on top of the Radiant Sentry. And it got dewatered by the creep wave. Varev's on the move out again. Really trying to make the most out of this Shadow Blade of his. And if it wasn't pinged I mean, out every before, time it's pinged out now. He's moved out with that Shadow Blade a ton, and every single time he dies. Like, I don't think he's had a successful movement with that, except for the bottom fight when he got the RP on the two heroes uh, so inside of the So is that a scary fact when he then moves out with a gem and he's died every single time? I'm scared for him, Toby. <laughs> he's, lo he's, look he's looking at error. And now, blink RP. Oh, oh no! Oh! Balls! <laughs> that is about the appropriate response. Ah! Oh. Skewering the rage target. Era gets forced off away from the Sunstrike as well. With RP down, there's practically a guaranteed tier 2 tower. Because they just don't have the initiation, even the Lincoln Spear, to protect Koi for more than the Aegis Immortal is already doing. The advantage is he didn't lose the gem. He didn't die. But now, Blink, skewer, okay. he actually pulls in Honey. Honey actually gets put in a better position to get a great ulti off. They have to trigger the Shrine for the regeneration, because Forev is continuously ticking. He's like dying through the shrine. Yep. Well, there's still the Nova. Remember, this isn't even Ags yet, but you're losing more. Now 3-4-3. Three, three. Adam has gone down. The Deep Pusher is dead. Yep. Life is I mean, hard. I, they don't have the Veno, but they don't have RP either. Oh, man. It's it's really hard for them to go high ground, though. This is like one of, the, I think, the biggest weakness of, of Nip's lineup is it is so hard for them to hit tier threes that even with the coddle being dead, knowing RP is down, they still can't really breach the high ground because they just don't have sustain, right? I There's no hero the that picks, keeps right? the push going. Like they, they need the picks. Like that's the only way to make it work. But how do you get picks from inside the base? Especially when well, bears I mean, pick up a gem at this point, you can't even keep a ward inside. But maybe they can do that with a gem. They find Trixie. Trixie's by Carapus. Half a second. He can let it go now. I get a little bit of a stun onto the invoker, but no one else is there to help him. So they get the kill. Yeah. I mean, the, the main point is, like, they do need picks, but they, they don't have any hero that can heal. So, like, there's no healing ward, there's no urn even, I think, on the side of Nip. And that's... Yeah. Oh, they do have an urn, yeah. never mind. Yeah, urn you, have, you have the Greaves from Venno. Yeah, that's about it, though. I mean, in the, in the grand scheme of things, it's not really a lot of sustain, just having one item. 
Whereas you want something that, that keeps everyone at a, a high level of HP and that you can continue to hit the tier 3 and not feel like you're just going to get like counter killed. But yeah, more time here for Fata, still sitting at top of the net worth. He's got the, the Manta done, he's going for the Basher into what I assume is going to be the Straight Abyssal. And once he gets that, game is hard. And Bears are forcing the issue on bottom. Honey and Ira are not really prepared for this just yet. There's not a mass amount of wards. Trixie's going to move forward, but remember, Observers and Sentries have been ripe everywhere on the map, so he knows he can't move forward. He also knows there's a gem on the Magnus. I think they're cutting through the tree line to make it so the Sentry can see him. Well, that's there's full tower. vision up here. Where's the RP? I'm wondering too if this is when you want to see Harney putting more aggressive aggressive play cords. Well, he's trying to be a smoke breaker, just in case, you know, there was a wrap around. Uh, they find Alpha Wolf only. And now retreats. That Alpha Wolf's worth 125 gold, man. But yeah, this is a, the moment in the game where the AM is getting really close to a point where he's going to become too much to handle. Because, I mean, the Storm doesn't have the items to kill Anti-Mage, right? He had to itemize to not die to the Anti-Mage by just buying the Lincolns and ensuring that he's not going to get Mana Void in the middle of his team and just become like a, a bomb and just kill everybody. But yeah, it's it's going to get harder before it gets easier for Nip. Is there something on the... No. I was wondering how long the Aghanims would take. But Keeper of the Lines only just got a 4 star. He's not as lucky as the Rubik who has a 60 gold per minute as the level 10 talent. Yeah, but he also has that Illuminate spell. It's pretty good. Although in this game, it's actually kind of difficult for him to push out waves because there is a Nyx and a Storm. So it's putting a lot of just idle pressure on him whenever, you know, Koikfa and, uh, you know, even Aaron Trixie, if any of them are off the map, he's scared, right? He doesn't want to sit in lane and, and use a blast and creep vision. He'll just die. Trixie. He's a fraction of a second too late to find Yapsaw TPing out. They just and lost their tier 2 for no reason. Yeah, Bears, the jump in, the RP! Oh, record the two big calls. They need to create some space. Door Spirit's going to go down. A long time on the sidelines, 40 seconds, but the enemy will lose his own life for the cause. In comes Harney, not in range for a Nova. Can't force up down there either. Cinder is just trying to stall them up. The sentry wall is down, they see their target. The Sunstrike off target as well. Cinder backs up and stays alive as Firo has to go in. But Ira has himself a double kill, but Firo, he's going to open it up. A fresh sentry ward. They see the invoker, but he's out of range, out of vision. And on the run. It's him and Rubik who are the last ones left alive, and that's because Rubik was never Im involved in that engagement. Man, that life stealer is gigantic. He just completely shredded Era during that fight. Like, er the item progression on the AM, like, he goes for the BKB, and I get it. There's a lot of disable. Uh, you don't really want to put yourself in a situation where you have to worry about things like Venno ulti and stuff like that, even though you have that, like, built-in spell shield. He wants to be able to sit in the fight and hit heroes during an RP. Like, that's the, the biggest thing for him right now, but... It's actually becoming difficult for him to itemize because just how farmed Era actually is. He does an insane amount of damage, and if you don't buy something that protects you from physical DPS, like a butterfly or something like that, he's gonna just maul you to death every single fight. Mm -hmm. Loving this movement from Trixie. They found an Invis rune, so he can just start with a stun without worrying about losing the damage of the Vendetta and having Life Stealer inside of him. The only target they have to be careful of is Forev, but. Where's that gem? Gold for me. Actually, where is that gem? Who's got that gem? I was on the high ground a second ago. Oh, it's, uh, it's back at base. It's back at the dire base. Yeah. yeah. All right, so Roshan's up again. They, like, I think bears actually need to fight this. It's very difficult, but giving the storm another Aegis is, I don't know if they can afford to do that. They can't, and they know it. So they're going for the wraparound. They're trying to come from behind. But Cinder is, in, Cinder is in the smoke block position as well. They're just going down mid. Yeah, they've they've got a creep wave with them. So if they want to try and beat the tier 3 tower, potentially they can. The tier 2 tower will be the easier easier objective, a more achievable one right now. Yeah, it's it's also further away from the rush, but uh, they're going to go for the flank. TP to try and. Oh, Koifa. Jump forward. He just got vision. Now you'll see Adam. Life Stealer can still pop out. Fighter in the neighborhood. Blinks to the tree line. Say goodbye to Alpha Wolf. 
And the chase keeps going. Farter is right next to him. The Quirk is out of mana. He has the Aegis of the Immortal. And that's great, but it's not giving him the mana he wants right now. In fact, Trixie, he's the one who's more on the front lines. But everyone is gone. All the bears have bailed. Invoker is TP top. And he's trying to turn this into a split game. I mean, that's really all they can do. Problem with splitting against Nip is that uh, for the Invoker, at least, it's very, very hard to live. That's why he had to buy BKB. Like, it's the only item that's going to allow him to potentially escape a gank if he wants a side lane push. So he was forced into buying it. It does make him, again, extremely susceptible to Lifestealer. Like, he will get, like, two shot. He's got seven armor. But your only other choice is either go for these ganks yourself, which they may have an opportunity for, as Invoker initiated on... Okay, no, yep. no, 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 no. <laughs> Yapsaw's in the neighborhood. He has a stolen Spike Carapace. And uh, what else did he just get? Nope, it's just jump up for Rev, skewer him back, look for something. The Spike Camp is causing problems. No Blink Dagger available. And now actually the stun stolen by Yapsaw. He's going to miss it with the Mana Void and Shockwave. That is enough damage to find the kill. Almost a 400 gold worth Nyx Assassin. And he's the lowest net worth for the Dire side, almost. Cinderin takes the cake on that one. Yeah, but he's actually not even doing that bad, if you think about it. He's still got his four staff. He's still doing better than a Coddle. And it's not often that you see an ogre with more net worth than a coddle just by virtue of, you know, spamming Illuminate. But again, it's tough. You know, 343 can't walk to a lane because he's terrified. Quick is playing off the map all the time. Trixie's playing off the map all the time. Either of those heroes just eat him. So it's interesting how the game kind of played out because the itemization for the side of bears became extremely difficult just because of, like, the, the hybrid damage that, you know, Nip have. Forcing the AM to buy a BKB in this game is really good for the life stealer. You don't want the AM buying a butterfly. You don't want the AM buying like that abyssal blade at a, a faster point in the game, because that's when he starts kiting you out in fights, and that's when he can actually jump you. But as long as you keep him like lower itemization and, and forcing him to buy like these defensive things, it works great. Oh, Fada thought he was actually going to be the primary target, but Adam was sitting right on top of a dire observer ward. Quick jump out, and Koi forgets the easiest bloodstone charge of his life. Funny part is, he's still only got nine. He's he's not even yeah. back to ground zero on his bloodstone yet. Well, he dies at the start of every engagement. That's it's, true. It's still Error that's doing all the work. Stupendous. Yeah, I mean he's still got a, a tremendous amount of net worth though. He still had a Fero, mm -hmm. and uh, the AM is not really that far ahead at all of anyone. I feel like they picked the Magnus and the AM together, but I haven't. You know, I've seen Fata empowered a handful of times. But I haven't really seen them playing around it that much, if that makes sense. Like, Fata's not, like, farming only by 4F to get him powers and stuff like that. So I don't know how often they've run this, but... But there's, there's no other way to do it, right, with the Anti-Mage. At this point of the game, he needs to be the one split-pushing instead of the Invoker. So the Invoker yeah. can farm in the safety of his own place. Because Anti-Mage is just more maneuverable. Yeah, I mean, even with as maneuverable as he is, though, he still runs the risk of dying. Like, I assume that, yeah, Abyssal's on the way for, uh, for the Life Stealer, And once that comes out... They'll be able to kill the AM too. The Agonyms is up behind him. We're, we already saw the issues of, of the tick for bears. Issues just got a lot stronger. Their Please advantage is Honey's only repositioning item is a four star. It isn't a blink dagger. That would be scarier. Are they gonna... Is this almost a trade-off? Like the tier two tower is being lost on the top, but in bottom, Ninjas in pajamas are not here. They are not ready to defend. Fortification can buy them a little bit more time. And here comes your first TP in from Trixie. Misses the stun over on Fata, so Fata will turn around. Here's the damage coming. Now more TPs are arriving. Illuminate spam is being a bit of a pain in the butt. But they'll get out in Storm Spirit. Long jump forward right over the top of them into the middle of Bears. Have they got any stun, any disable? Yeah, he's got the BKB. They'll pop out. They try and hide. The dust tricked off by Trixie. It'll catch out the Magnus with no RP. This is a fight the Bears cannot take. Or if oh. they can, it's Farter with the cleave. They bring through two. And Koifer, he's on the run. He has the Aegis Mortal. He's also got a crap time disable. Pulling back in Farter. Trixie wants more, but he's got no mana left to fight with. So Fira puts up the ice wall, looking to play around Hani, who still is holding on to that Nova of his. But Bears are happy was, with what they've got. They've backed out. That was a super sick combo. Like, they just blew up that Lifestealer after Rage went down. Fira was waiting for it that whole time, just gave him the meatball dunk, and he just exploded. That was very nicely done. If they didn't, like, get that Lifestealer kill, this game was going to be an absolute nightmare, I think, for Bears to be able to win. But with that... 
You know, it's putting the Anti-Mage really close to his Butterfly. Era going for the um, the Abyssal Blade. He doesn't really have the inventory space right now to buy an MKB. He'll probably just get rid of the, I guess, the armor at this point. But yeah, it's it's actually a power spike that Fata desperately needs in the fights. Because when he popped BKB, oh, actually, yep, sorry. Yeah, Koif is trying, but Yabsor still pulling lightning. He's got more speed oh, than anyone no, else. There's that strike! Oh, that's a minute. That's a minute oh, with no Koifa. Nip, not like this. Don't throw away the game. They <laughs> went down. They actually I mean, lose this control is... of the lanes now, right? Like, it. Yeah. This is what we call mom spaghetti, Toby. It's just everywhere right now. My mom was neat. Oh. I don't know. I just feel like you don't make those plays unless you're. Like, you're either really sure you can get the kill, or you're just a little bit nervous, and you're, like, kind of unsure. But that Solar Crust that uh, Yapsor had actually kept him alive. That thing is such good effective HP for supports at this stage in the game, when your base armor is, like, ridiculously low, and you're playing against a Storm Spirit who doesn't have a Bloodthorn or an MKB. I mean, he's building towards one now, the, the MKB, but he's not going to have it for a little while. They're, they're coming for a Rax, man. This Bear's Maneuver, the Butterfly up on Andy Bay, put him on the front line. Sure, he's gonna drop the Dominator for now. They're gonna find a better target. Nice. The skewer is Hani. Hani four staffed in. He really wants to let this Nova go on multiple targets. So he'll Gale and now Nova. That's the death of the Keepers alive. He can't stand here. So even if Hani dies, he knows he gets something in return. Maybe not so great giving Plague Wards over to Yapsol, but it's better than giving him Nova. That was really well played by Hani. He got like the maximum effect in this out of that. The only reason Yapsol didn't get hit is because he he stole Ball Lightning and balled away from the Nova. So. If he hadn't done that, there would have been like two or three heroes low on HP. That might have even been enough, honestly, to kind of delay the push coming in from bears anyway. They do still have an RP, but they don't have vision of uh, Nip's high uh, ground, so Nip going for the wraparound. They're coming out to fight, Scan and Koifa's picked up a demon edge. He doesn't have buyback while he's got this. He didn't have buyback last time either. Uh. But they want it. They know the Coddle's dead. Uh, the Observer and Sentry Ward saw the other Sentry Ward being placed, and now Nip will realize The jig is up. Defense time. And now That's a very Yaps tense moment there. Yapsaw's turning himself into Hani. He's gonna start farming with Plague Wars to find his levels. Yeah, dude, why not? Get that Ghost Scepter, let's go. That item is actually unbelievably value against Nip's team. Like, no one has a Defusal Blade. The Magical Burst isn't really super scary. I guess outside of maybe the Veno, but the Veno you're just going to tick out anyway, so it's not like having a Ghost Scepter is going to be the reason why you died. It'll most likely be the reason why the Life Stealer or the Storm can't just blow you up. They are both going to have MKBs relatively soon though, and that does kind of put a damper on the, the Butterfly purchase from Fata. It's kind of unfortunate they weren't really able to abuse that item timing, because when he purchased that item, no one on the side of Nip was even close and they just weren't able to really utilize that that timing as much as maybe they wanted to. And now with the dual MKBs, Fata is still going to just melt. Yeah. So he needs to play the uh, the dodge evade game. Unless they know they can lock down. And with the Abyssal Blade, he'll have a better chance for that lockdown. What would also be good is if Ferev's able to get into a good position let off the RPs. I haven't seen actually an RP in probably 10, 15 minutes. It's so hard though, man. The Plague Wards, the Vision from the Nyx, the oh, Storm as Fata. well. BKB. Trixie has they a friend run. sitting inside of him, but that's uh, gotta run. That's the eight-second BKB down. Invoke is sitting on a five-second BKB. You can tell, man, when you BKB like that, there is definitely some nerves going on. No risk. Doesn't matter when it's that yeah. low anyway, right? I suppose they still have to wait another fifty seconds before he has it up. And none of the I mean, waves. Eight seconds. Like, you still don't have Nip with any kind of lane advantage. <laughs> it doesn't yeah, exist. But they always pick lineups like this. They pick lineups that just have pretty much no wave clear whatsoever. They they very much emphasize the laning phase, but they don't emphasize being able to like de-push or, or get map control that way. They always want to go for fights. Smoke gang time for NIP. Era. Infestors off cooldown in two seconds time. And this Roshan's dying fast. There is a TP fort coming forward. Yamso puts on the plague ward. It's Roshan almost down. In fact, he is down. Tornado. It picks up Sindarin. 
Okamajai up and towards the air. The bigger one is actually the keeper of the line being picked off. Koifa triggers the BKB, a big RP. Oh. It'll connect. The Sun Strike's coming down as well. The cleave damage. Vada's doing it. Error is gone. Koifa, he wants the pieces, but Yabsor protected by his Ghost Scepter. Stole ball lining, and he's trying to play the better Storm Spirit, but he can't find Koifa over in the tree lines. Harney will fall. He did get his Nova off as well as the Gale so far. That's not the healthiest man in the world. But buybacks will be forced here. Yeah, Sirs is looking at these two gems. He's like, what do I do? There's two gems. I don't have room for this. <laughs> he put Solar Crest into his infantry. He's going to get recalled. Yeah, that's a, that's a Coddle. Um, he, uh, he actually died at the very beginning of the fight, but he's got the respawn talent, so he just revived really fast. They're going to recall the AM as well. I guess he's swapping out for items. Yeah, he bought Boots of Travel. He's got BKB and Dominator still in his inventory with the Aegis, so... 44 seconds left on the life stealer. Let's see if they can get that Rex. Possibility is there. Tower reduces in science. Part of one quick hit will take care of it. Cinderin doesn't really know what he wants to go on. The Gale takes on the anti-mage, but they're just throwing around the ogre like a ragdoll with a deafening blast and sunstrike and illuminate all connect at the perfect time. There is no other option but to buy back on the ogre. Koifa trying to clean up the lane. The illusions of Fada's doing some work. Now Trixie with his son. And he may need to burn him down. Remember, he's got the Aegis the Immortal. So everything they're committing to him right now, it can all just be undone. Harney jumps forward. The Gale lets the Nova go. That's a big ultimate. It is one minute only on cooldown. So it's not that huge. And they get the BKB out from Fada once again. That's now yeah, down. The BKB. He just, he, just, he just passed it off. He's thrown it to his stash. He doesn't care about it anymore. Yeah, it's it's a good BKB though. If it can preserve your um your Aegis and then you can walk down mid the middle lane and get that tier three with the Aegis still in your inventory, that's like the ideal situation. Because then you don't have to worry about okay, well I'll just die in BKB after I respawn. Having the Aegis in your inventory is much more important than the BKB charge. All right, so top melee Rax is down. The first Raxing of the game happened at around the 44 minute mark. It took a while. Yeah, but just look at the net worth difference now, Toby. Like, the AM is now towering over anybody on the side of Nip, where before he was barely, like, 2k net worth mm -hmm. over either one of them. And that's that's the problem. It's like, the AM needs to be playing from very far ahead to kind of function just by nature of what items he buys, like having the Battle Fury, the Empower, you know, you just farm fast. Nip, we're keeping up with him on both of their cores almost the entire game. This is probably the first time where Nip's cores are, are starting to be behind of where the AM and the Invoker actually are. And that's not a good sign. No, they need kills to make it work. That's why they're looking in towards the jungle, uh, in towards the tree line. Firo, he just went in this. Have they got the vision? Firo with a BKB, starts to TP. There's no oh, badge. No Hero, badge. Hero wasn't even attacking him at the point, but Fada's in the neighborhood, so an extra stun. Hero's looking at him, but it's tricky. He's the man in trouble. The jump down, no spike carapace available, out of mana. Lost the gem, but Hani, a great Nova. That should be the guarantee kill on Forever, but he's still gonna good throw RP. out. Maybe with the RP, he'll end up surviving. Fada's in here, can't mana boy, because Koifa jumps up and they find Firo. So the Keeper of the Light, as well as the Invokers down, Yapsor and Forever will also take a fall. It's a triple kill for Hani. It's the Venomancer doing work, and Fada trying to run, but he's got no movement speed. He has the Aegis Immortal. Invoker will buy back and try and create a little bit of space, but they need Lockdown. Syndrome has no mana. He doesn't have it available, so Fada blinks in. He's hiding in the tree line. He's an inch away from the Gemma True Sight. Goes deeper into the jungle, and then gets recalled out by the Keeper of the Light. Honey, I think you need that gem, bro. Man, that ulti from Honey was so good. Hit, like, almost everyone on the team. They forced the cheese out of the Magnus, and he kind of had to RP at a sub up double time. Like, yeah, he hit the two heroes, but during that point, Fata was disabled, so he wasn't able to hit. So both Honey and uh, I think it was Quakefa, actually, who got rp together, which is actually a, a solid pairing of heroes to get. There was just no damage. So RP goes out, no one gets hit. Venno ult is, like, ticking everybody down. Everyone on the team dies except for the Anti-Mage, obviously, because he's the only one with magic resist, and being left alone against all those heroes is not going to be favorable for you. Man. At the end of the day, still, like, okay, yeah, it wasn't a great fight for Bears. Uh, they did take out the top racks, so the range rank is now fully done. And if you look at the swing in the gold graph, what they gained from the previous fight up on top was already so massive that the fight on bottom, it hurts, but it's not, it's not critical. It keeps it just in pajamas ahead in the experience gain. They're sitting about 8,000 in front, but we're also reaching the point of the game where almost everyone's going to get level 25 soon. So it won't matter as well. 
Yeah, I mean, that's definitely true, but I'm looking at an AM who's not really got a lot of choices left in regards to what items he can get. And I'm looking at Koikfa and I'm thinking, okay, you, that guy can actually buy like a whole nother item. I mean, I guess the MKB is going to be the choice for him. He's not going to go back for the Bloodthorn, doesn't want to be uh, more of a hindrance in the way of getting mana voided. But I still feel like Nip's team in the, the, the ultra late game phase is on paper still just a little bit better unless 4Ev's like bringing amazing RPs to the table. Yeah. And that's a rough place to be in because you need vision for good RPs, you need to be patient, and Plague Wards are dicks. That's that's all you need to know. So easy. Don't get slapped by the Plague Wards. <laughs> it sounds easy, right? Yeah, Not it that really easy. Does. It really isn't. But jumping forward, straight up Abyssal Blade. They want Cinderin, and they've got him. No buyback. 85 seconds without Cinderin. Nipper not in a position. In fact, they were coming out looking for their own gank inside the Dire Jungle. The advantage is pushing through the top. It doesn't gain you a rack. The mid lane and the bottom lane are still going the way of NIP. Oh, that'll take no time at all. Fata can bot bottom, get recalled back, and then the rest of his team can push mid. There's not really anything that uh, Nipper are going to want to do during this downtime. If they, they're, like, they're showing the life stealer top as well. So they know for a fact that the AM would be safe to TP bottom, and that's exactly what he's going to do. So they can walk down mid, or they can just follow the AM, whichever, doesn't really matter. Um, they can get the other shrine as well, and they're just perfectly safe for the next 40 seconds. Done. All right, defense. They're gonna start spamming out the plague wars, and you're seeing Honey with the aggressive positioning on them too. These are for the Magnus. You could potentially try and defend the line by just making a perimeter around your tower. But for now, he's keeping him on interrupting blink daggers. Fada, he's just going to the front lines, attacking into the melee racks. They can't really slow him down. Trixie already just done. Fada triggers his BKB and actually gets the Abyssal Blade off with the RP combined error. He was able to rage in time, so Koifa jumps forward, looking to control up a little bit more. Does he have enough to kill up forever with the Mana Void? You've lost your Venomancer, but they're all coded again in guns. How much damage is there? Maybe oh, a little bit stolen. more when you actually have the stolen Nova, which was there for Yapsor, but the survivability is still too much. Koifa jumps forward, they won't find anything more. Yamsor is hiding in the tree line. But the tier four towers are under attack, they have to go back to defend. But 108 seconds without the invoker on the field. That was a very nice combo again though. Like on the lifestyle, the first time they force Era to buy back, they get the RP. Firo like perfectly times his meteor deafening to make sure that Era drops there. And committing the buyback, I think is enough economical damage for bears to be satisfied for the time being because they don't want the, the lifestealer finishing up the Abyssal Blade. That's going to be something else that's going to put a lot more pressure on Fata during a team fights. And you saw, even with Solar Crest, that lifestealer is chunking him. It, he doesn't care about BKB. He doesn't care about, you know, your butterfly or whatever. He's going to kill you if he gets to hit you. Yep. They're coming. NIP, they're running down the mid. They would love to get an extra pick. But the primary thing is to level up the, the racks. Koifa can also join them. He didn't finish up the MKB. He bought the BTs. They're so getting he, ratted, though. So he, so he can join the fight. Yeah, you've got Fata coming in through the bottom. But maybe this just He's becomes a GG push. He's going to get this. Does this become a GG push, then? Like, you're losing your side lane of racks via mid. This doesn't look like a, the greatest trade. This, this isn't even a trade. Is it a is push? Is it a trade at all? I, it's, it's, it's a loss. It's not even a trade. They're going to run. It's a They're loss. They're actually losing their whole base. Oh, yeah, so he can actually get the stun. He'll cancel Trixie's no, TP. Trixie can't go back. The anti mage will be here in the fight. The Storm Spirit's not close enough, so now I don't think they've got a choice. It's a turn oh, and fight. God. They have to make this work. The range creep, it gets cancelled. That was the BT to the Storm. Koifa can't come in either. It's a TP catastrophe. He can TP, he can TP back bottom if he wants. The Coddle can just bring him back. Oh, honey. It's a good ultimate. Fata will try and take his life. Honey went in there with the Gemma True side. They're pulling in the anti mage. Four staff can push Fata a little bit further away. Honey takes the mana void. So they'll burn through that one. Era is still trying to take out this damn mid rack. The Sunstrike will connect, doing some decent damage. And Fortification stops Era from doing any damage. Fata forward. Here comes the tornado. No one will catch the rider. They are all falling back and Fata in once again. Trixie with a spike arrow for the RP. Oh, the RP. It catches Trixie with a deafening blast. And there she is again. A perfect point. A triple kill for Fata. This may seal the deal. Honey is down. An ultra kill for Fata. This is beyond disastrous. The TP's the bottom. It's the corpses at the bottom racks of Dire side. The only buybacks they had they've used. 
Spada is forcing Megas, and there is nothing NIP can do to stop it. Oh man, that was a pretty intense series of events. I mean, they're gonna go for the kill here. They should Boy, be able to pick off Hero. He's got no BKB. Uh, Bufada's coming in. He's got a Bissel Blade. The stun from Trixie. Create any space you've got. You do bring down the Invoker. So 96 seconds without him. A quick spike, Carapace. Trixie for more stuns for Rez. No blink skewer. Venomanta is up in five seconds' time. He'll have the Nova available. It may just be enough damage. They can keep bears off the tier four towers. Maybe. A lot of maybe. Yeah, a lot of ifs. A lot of hope. They got no wave clear, Toby. How are they going to kill these creeps? Quite far. That's it. Remnant jump. Remnant jump. All right, your life stealer has got a solid arm on by a battle fury or a maelstrom or something. I, that that series of events was so crazy because oh. when the TP got canceled, as a as a refresher, by the way. There's two refreshers, oh, Anti Mage and Magnus. I mean, yeah, why not, right? <laughs> yeah, you want at this point, you may even just be happier with the with the double BKBs and the double mana void. But he he ha actually still has seven thousand gold after having bought a refresher. Decent game. Uh, he's he's gonna join the ten k club, Toby. He's gonna have ten thousand gold when the game ends, and a full inventory. Is that really the menu I want to be keeping up? <laughs> I, I think, think so. Actually, buybacks might be a little bit more important. Let's let's keep that on the board instead. Nah. It's just something funny. It's, I mean, it's, it's realistically about the speaking, blink. like oh the gem, they saw Trixie. Oh, oh no. No, the he gem. came in to scout out Roshan, but the Gemma True Sight was on for Rev. A minute and a half without your Nyx Assassin. Man, I really looked like Nip for a little while. I actually had this game in the bag. They were getting like so many good picks. Their item progression was great. Their cores were ahead for so long. Venom was and doing then... so much work in the fight, they couldn't sustain through it, Bears. Yeah, the, the Venom was actually like. After they started kind of losing their footing a bit, the Venno is what actually kept them in the game because he was the one who was getting all the kills. Like the, the two backline heroes were getting hit by Poison Nova a lot. And then, you know, 3 4 3 dies, no more sustain on your push, really hard to go high ground, especially into the Venno wards. But yeah, now it's um, it's all they can do to just keep their base alive against the Megas. They're coming in. Bears can smell it. A rematch that they wanted with Alliance. They're the ones who are waiting for him in the lower bracket final. If they can get there, now Koifa jumps in the BKP. The RP, however, it catches Kai. He needs to get that Nova off. He's going down. He gets it off just in time. The second RP holding Koifa in position. A straight buyback. Adam is low. So is Fira. Era. He needs to do more damage. There's a jump forward. Trying to kill off that Invoker. He's so low. The Sunstrike's coming in here. He's going to die to it. They're gone. There's no one left to hold it. This is the game right now. GG. 55-23. And Bears will take it and advance themselves forward to the next round where they will face Alliance, the team which has defeated them every time they're faced up against them here in the qualifier. My goodness, that game. That was, uh, it's another one of those two O's, but it's so misleading, right? Like this game was incredibly back and forth. And the first game was just, it was an outdraft in my opinion, which is unfortunate because I feel like if Nip got to play the series again, it would just be another coin flip. You know, you don't know who's gonna win. And, you know, fortunately for Bears, they came in today a little bit uh, better team. They had a really solid draft game one. Game two, it looked a bit touch and go, but on the back of an alacrity empowered anti-mage, they're, uh, they're able to take the game. Shout out to Forev, he had a really rough start, landed some really clutch RPs at good times, you know, forcing the buyback from era, getting like two man RP when they were chasing out of their own base to just ensure that they were gonna win the game. So everyone kind of came together at the end there for Bears. It was a terrific performance from them to get there. And 2 0 and up. It could be a very long day for them. Remember, we go through the entire lower bracket. So, winner against Alliance, and winner of that will face up against Secret for the, l for the l only spot to come for Europe to battle it out at the Kiev Major. So, we'll be back in a bit. OD Picks will be taking the reins from me, but Andy will stick around with you. So, stay tuned to the BTS streams because you've got all the coverage from all the channels from all the regions, or well, almost all of them, uh, <laughs> right here. So, stay tuned. We'll be back.